Hi guys, I am here with your Bible readings. I hope you guys are having a good day. We have a two-day Bible reading today. We will be reading Revelation chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 13. We'll be reading about the woman and the dragon. That will be in Revelation chapter 12. And in Revelation chapter 13, we'll be reading about the beast that come out of the sea and the beast that comes out of the earth. And then we have our Psalms and our Proverbs. And our Psalms today are Psalms 140 and 141. Two very beautiful Psalms. And then we have our Proverbs. The woman and the dragon is a very scary thing. Very scary thing to me. Every time I read it, and the very first time I read the Bible. When I read the story of the woman and the dragon in Revelation, when I came to that part. The whole book of Revelation you know, knowing what's going to happen at the end of the world. You know, the first time you read it, and every time you read it. I mean, it's going to happen. Whether it happens to us or to our family, friends, or whoever it happens to. Even if we don't know that person, they are still our brothers and sisters. Whether you want to accept them or not. Because we are all made by God. So we are all brothers and sisters, no matter what color you are, no matter where you're from, etc. Everybody's going to see what's going on at the end of the world. and Today we're going to read more about it, about what's going to happen. So let's get started here. And we'll be reading in the New International Version if you'd like to follow along with me. So, we'll be reading back-to-back -back Revelations with chapter 12 and 13. So, let's get started. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown with twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter, and her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought back against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The dragon did. And the dragon's angels the devil's side had lost their place. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now come the salvation and the power. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, 
has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times a half time, out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with a turret. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth, sorry, it opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name in his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All those names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They're the, they're the ones that will do it. The Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with a sword, with a sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed and it performed great signs even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people because of the signs it was has given because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast, who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. There they go making another false idol. The second beast was given power to give 
breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. That's the number of the devil, Satan, 666. Alright guys, that's where we're going to stop with the book of Revelations for today. Did you lock the door? I I heard something in there. All right, now we're going to read our beautiful psalms. Beautiful psalms of David. You know I love them. Psalm 140, for the director of music, a psalm of David. Rescue me, Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent, who devise evil plans in their hearts and stir up war every day. They make their tongues as sharp as a serpent's. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Keep me safe, Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent, who devise ways to trip my feet. The arrogant have hidden a snare for me. They have spread out the cords of their nets and have set traps for me along my path. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Hear, Lord, my cry for mercy. Sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer, you shield my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the wicked their desires, Lord. Do not let their plans succeed. Those who surround me proudly rear their heads. May the mischief of their lips engulf them. May, their, may burning coals fall on them. May they be thrown into the fire, into miry pits never to rise. May slanderers not be established in the land. May disaster hunt down the violent. I know that the Lord secures justice for the poor and upholds the cause of the needy. Surely the righteous will praise your name and the upright will live in your presence. And that was Psalm 140 for the director of music, a Psalm of David. Can I start over? Please. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Okay, and now we're going to Psalm 141. A Psalm of David I called to you, Lord. Come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the uplifting, may the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds. Along with those who are evildoers, do not let me eat their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me, that is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, that is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it for my prayer will still be against the deeds of evildoers. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs, and the wicked will learn that my words were well spoken. They will say, As one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. 
but my eyes are fixed on you, Sovereign Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. Keep me safe from the traps set by evildoers, from the snares they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own tents while I pass by in safety. And that was a Psalm of David, Psalm 141. And our Proverbs today, from yesterday and today, is Proverbs chapter 30, verses 17 through 20. The eye that mocks a father, that scorns an aged mother, will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by the vultures. There are three things that are too amazing for me, four that I do not understand, the way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a young woman. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Please pray. Um, I know a lot of people are probably praying for snow for Christmas, and I heard that we're supposed to get snow for Christmas. And I know a lot of people are always excited about that white Christmas. But um, please pray if we do get snow that it's not really bad, that people are still able to travel safely because I really want my Aunt Dora to be able to get to go to the Christmas party with her sisters and family so she doesn't have to be home alone for Christmas. My Aunt Dora, she lost her husband and she lost her daughter and she lost her fur babies. And she's all alone. I don't know how she does it. She's very strong. A lot stronger than I am. She's really strong in her faith. That's for sure. She's got really strong faith. She knows God's always with her. That's for sure. She wouldn't be able to do it. She knows God's with her, and that's what keeps her going. I know it. I know it, because she loves the Lord. I know that's what keeps her going. He does. But, you know, it's nice to be with family, especially on Christmas, because it gets extra lonely that time you know, this time of year on the holidays and stuff. And she really wants to be with them and celebrate with them, you know. You never know how much time all of us have left. It might be the last Christmas some of us have together, or all of us for that matter. So please pray that she's able to get to the party, to be with everyone else. So I ask you to pray for no snow or a minimal amount of snow so she safe travels so she can get to go to the party I would really appreciate that and please keep Sherman your prayers Sherman Crabtree because he's still down with his back still really hurting him really bad and he can't do hardly much his back is really swollen got a slip disc in his back you know pinched nerve that goes right where the sciatica is I know how that feels because I have double sciatica and mine hurts every day all day long and his is going from his back under his stomach and clear down his leg he's in a lot of pain so and I know how that feels and he can barely get around 
So please pray for him. And please pray for Norman Karshner. It sounds like he's going down the wrong path right now and hanging around with people that he shouldn't be hanging around with that are really bad influences on him because our family was told that the people he's hanging around with he's either going to end up dead or in jail and he didn't sound like his self when a family member talked to him yesterday he sounded really out of it which is not normal for him. Yeah, so something's going on. And it makes me worry even more. So please pray for him. And it makes me worry even more because then I'm afraid, you know, because he lives right, pretty much right beside of Mom and Abby and Jimmy, and when people want money for, you know, stuff they're not supposed to be doing, they'll do anything to anybody. So, I've been worrying about that a lot. So please pray he gets back on the right path. I think he feels like he doesn't need to, like he has nothing really to live for anyway. Because he was really close to his mom and his dad, especially his mom, and they're both, they have both passed away now. And I don't know, I thought he was doing really good. Him and Mom were helping each other out a lot, and they were always together, going places, and like I said, helping each other out a lot. He had got a home and beside a mom and was renting it, so he wasn't homeless anymore. And mom would cook for him every day, like two or three times a day, she'd make meals. Something bad's going on there. So please pray for Norman Karshner. Alright guys. Please pray for April and Linda Thacker as well. Because they both have a lot of health problems. And Debbie Lee. Because she has a lot of health problems. And please continue, continue to keep Jimmy Myers in your prayers. He's still getting over being sick. Alright guys, and please pray for Jewel Gill, because her legs are really bad. And please pray for Barb Post. She is still in the nursing home, and as far as I know, she'll be spending Christmas in the nursing home. And I pray she gets a lot of visitors, and gets to have a good Christmas. And I pray that someone gives her our gift that we got her, <coughs> that we're going to send down for someone to give to her. And we pray that they give it to her. I really don't think that they will, but I pray that they give it to her so she knows that we, we love her still and that we're always thinking about her. Yeah. So I really pray somebody gives her that gift from us. I know in my heart nobody will probably give it to her, but my <coughs> sisters, I don't think my sisters will give it to her, but I pray they do. Anyways, I'll quit rambling on. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.